So who watched Bridgerton over Christmas? I know I did, and if my Twitter timeline is anything to go by, then an awful lot of you did too. It seemed like the perfect antidote to lock down with its dullness and the fear, to immerse ourselves in frothy, bright, fun Regency London. Now my book, Daughters of Night, is set at a similar time and in London, and I'm delighted that Waterstones have asked me to recommend three books that I think that fans of Bridgerton would like. But first I'm just going to say a few words about my own book. Um, the book opens with Caro, my main character, who is herself a lady of London high society. Um, she goes for a, a secret assignation in the notorious dark walk of the Vauxhall Pleasure Garden. Um, those of you who have watched Bridgerton will remember that there was a scene where Daphne goes for a similar assignation in the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens and is accosted by an unwanted suitor and afterwards is afraid for her reputation. Um, if you see here these beautiful end pages of my book, this is a, a picture by Thomas Rowlandson of the Vauxhall Pleasure Garden and gives you some idea of, of, of what it was like. Um, but while Caro is in the Vauxhall Pleasure Garden, she discovers in the dark walk the body of a dying woman who is later revealed to be a high society prostitute. And once this is discovered, the Bow Street constables lose all interest in the case. Uh, but Caro is an extremely resourceful woman and she is determined not to let this matter drop and so she decides to look into the murder herself. I'm not going to say too much more about the plot because I don't want to give too much away but it's, it's a book about strong women in living in a society where women were expected to know their place. Um, it's about the sex trade, it's about murder, but it's also about women's friendships, um, betrayal and revenge, um, but also scandal and gossip and the various other threats uh, that women faced at that time. So Daughters of Night is um, it's a, it's a much darker Regency world than that uh, that we saw in Bridgerton, but it is also the same world and uh, it explores the same choices that women had to make at that time over marriage, over men, over money, um, scandal and gossip, um, and sex as a commodity, of course, which uh, was also touched upon in Bridgerton. So, of the other books I have chosen, the first is a classic. Here, Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. I'm sure this book needs no introduction um, and neither does its infamous heroine, Becky Sharp. Um, and Becky is a wonderful guide to Regency London, which is seen in this book in all its glory. All the um, locations, including the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens that we saw in Bridgerton are here in this book. Um, Becky is a strong woman character, she is cunning, she is resourceful, um, she uses her wits and her sexuality to try to advance through London society um, and um, she's not necessarily always the most likeable character but you admire Becky and you want her to succeed and I have to say I think there is, even though their circumstances are different, there is definitely a bit of Becky Sharp in, in my caro in my book. Secondly, is this book, The Beaumont by Hannah Grieg, which is a non-fiction book which tells you everything that you need to know about London society during the Georgian era. Um, and this, The Beaumont was the name that the newspapers gave to the richest and most famous aristocrats in London. Everybody wanted to be a part of the Beaumonts. They were the celebrities of their day. Um, but of course, they were very, they were a very exclusive set um, and they were famously hostile to anybody who, any social climbers who wanted to join their ranks. 
and this book tells you about their fashions, about the places that they went, about the scandals and the gossips, the, the terrible fate that awaited people who were ostracised by the Beaumont and shunned by them after social transgression. Um, it's, uh, it's a really, really great read and I really recommend it to anybody who wants to know more about um, Regency London and the world that Bridgerton showed us. Um, finally, this book, Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. Now this is actually a proof, it's not out until May 2021, but I guarantee that you will love it. Um, it's set in the 19th century and it tells the story of Nellie Moon. Now Nellie um, was uh, born with birthmarks covering a large part of her body and she was an outcast in the fishing village that she grew up in. But then a circus comes to town and Nellie's father sells her to the circus. And Nellie enters this world of showmanship, the dazzle of London society. Again, a large part of it is set at the Southwark Pleasure Garden. You can spot a theme here. Um, and Nellie is sort of torn between, on the one hand, loving being um, a celebrity after all those years of trying to sort of hide herself away, but on the other hand, feels uncomfortable at being um, displayed like she's some kind of freak. Um, and it's also, it, it, in the main, it's a love story, it's a romance, and it, it's a lovely, tender book. Um, but at the same time, it explores, um, uh, disability and um, the distortion of history. Uh, it's, it's a clever, clever book um, and I think that Nellie Moon is going to become uh, a huge star. Everyone's going to fall in love with Nellie Moon. So there we go. Four books, including mine, Daughters of Night, that I think that fans of Bridgerton will love.